from all around you long. I'm here to tell you how football is strong. Goes towards half forward, Grig again. Uses his body to uh, shepherd for uh, Stephen McLeod, it was. And the ball's been forced over the boundary line. Uh, Oakley came in to help. Stephen McLeod gets the ball to Oakley. Oakley by hand. It's come out. Thompson, nice looking pass going, looking for McFarlane, who went forward. Jackson McLeod is there also. Where are we calling for? Uh, and it will be thrown in. 15 minutes gone, second quarter. 68 plays, 22. Where are we in charge? So McFarlane take the, took the ball out of the ruck contest, went to feed it out the back door. No one there, but there's a free kick being given, and Toby Bray, who was holding free kick for the Werribee side, chips the ball across the front of goal, finds Knight. His uh, skills so far have been excellent, been able to hit targets on a regular basis. So from deep in defence, Changes direction, goes back to the far side of the ground, or over the top of Lovell's head, set him a target, the big fella. Oakley runs after the ball, picks the ball up, needs support. Went inside, outside, went over the boundary line. The umpire says it's mine and will be thrown back into play. I think Oakley's certainly going to be an asset to this side, though. Yeah, it's good to see him back here, and uh, once he can start playing some good football, they'll be right. Ball, tap down. Again, numbers there, picks up the back. McKay over the top, fed it back to McFarlane. Unfortunately, probably not the right option. Went to go back and get it again, and that was Yale. I think that's in there sliding underneath. Tackle comes on, and the umpire's going to come in and take possession. Ball, level, over the top, went back towards the boundary line. Yeah, heads towards the boundary line. Doesn't pick the ball up. He's pushed, but umpire um, says it's over the boundary line. And again, boundary umpire will come in. 16 and a half minutes gone. Where will be 11 goals, two, three goals, four Thompson. Second quarter, Buckley's Entertainment Centre scoreboard. Ball thrown into Lovell. Chug tried to get it one hand. It's O'Neill. Picks the ball up. Handball didn't hit a target. Coming the other way this time was Brathbone, I think. Can't pick and welcome back. And, of course, we see we've got a very special guest on the show this morning, Adam Scrobluck. He's going to help us out with some of the big predictions on this afternoon. We'll go to the first game. It's out at the Ring Road Recreation Reserve. It's the Bell Post Hill Panthers. They're sitting on top of the ladder undefeated as well, along with East Geelong. They take on the Fremantle of local football, North Geelong, who simply can't travel well. I'll go firstly to the future chairman of the tribunal, <laughs> Dale Smith. You're not happy about the tribunal, are you? Nah, mate, I've uh, got, uh, like, uh, even my own case, I'm not going to go back there anyway. No, uh, <laughs> you, you've already swayed me. You reckon North Line can't travel, so Bell Post Hill will win the game. Change the Even without Moreland and Tobin. Fair enough. Scrub it. You reckon the Magpies will go? Uh, I think they'll struggle, yeah, as, yeah. as Dale said, without Moreland and Tobin. There may be a slight chance, but Bell Post Hill, a good side. Yeah, pretty hard to toss out there, the Ring Road Recreation Reserve. Out at the, gu out at the Inverley Oval, the happy home of the Hawks. They take on the boys from the Gun Club, the Winchelsea Blues. I'll go to you first, Scrubber. Inverley Hawks are shot under the radar a little bit this year. They're not a bad side, and I think they'll be too good for Winchelsea. What do you reckon? Yeah, definitely. They really pushed us uh, when we played them. They're a good, quick side and got some uh, really good young players um, with, you know, I suppose, a hint of older players through there as well. So they'll be right up there this year. Out at the Devils Playground, the Cry Devils, they take on Anarchy Roos, who have improved a lot this year, but uh, of recent weeks have come down to earth a little bit after their thumping by Inverley last week. Dale, uh, do you give Anarchy any chance out of Cry? They'd probably be a good show, wouldn't they? Yeah, look, I think Anarchy win this game, Dick. Uh, Cry played and struggled against Geelong West last week, and I'm not taking anything against Geelong West's performance last week because it was they had actually twice as many shots, I think it was an equal, equal amount of shots as uh, Cry, but just couldn't kick straight. But uh, Anarchy just a little bit too good. Need to win this one, though. Yeah, indeed. Scrubber. Yeah, Anarchy bounced back, I'd say. The Roos for a win there, but the boys think as well. Speaking of Geelong West, it wasn't a bad uh, game by them last week. They took it right up to uh, to cry, and uh, they're out at the Church Street ground. Um, can they crack it for their first win this Saturday? Well, this afternoon, Dale? Fair chance. They would need to start well to uh, beat Thompson, but as Thompson performed last week, they kicked uh, 11 goals, as you said, before the show, Werribee, and uh, Thompson outscored them for the rest of the game. So Thompson should have the manpower up there. Unfortunately, losing Jackson McLeod won't be uh, any assistance to them, but they'll just scrape home, I think. Got a, got a week, did he? Took a week. Tribunal? Nah, got offered. Of it. Oh, that's all you do, mate. Take the week. Fair enough. What, what, no, okay, I won't go on about it, but you don't really like when, it. When, when we've got a show that we've got nothing to talk about, Dick, I'll discuss it. <laughs> Fair enough. He's not the trump. The, the, the opinions of uh, Dale Smith are not necessarily those of the station. The <laughs> <laughs> soft dick. up Geelong West out at uh, the Church Street Oval. They, they always thought they were going to improve when they went out there. They're probably just about to turn the corner, but will they do it against Thompson? Um, it would be close, a bit closer than people think this one. Geelong West have been playing some good footy. Um, Thompson a little bit up and down, so um, I'll pick a draw. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 
No one's going to come on the show and done that. Dude, that's thrown us completely. That, well, well done, mate. It might be a drawer. And all of a sudden, Adam Scrollback knew exactly what he was talking about. Out at the Winter Resort, the Belmont Lions, they take on Werribee Centrals. Now, Smithy, I saw the Belmont Lions a couple of weeks ago before North Geelong play against Banningburn out at Winter Resort. And they didn't look too bad. Scores were level going to the game about 10 minutes to go. But uh, Werribee Centrals, uh, sorry, Banningburn come out of the top of them. So do you give them any chance against Werribee Centrals? Fair chance now is at home. Uh, that was the only reason, but uh, they're going to have to play some good footy. Werribee last week in that first quarter was probably a good quarter of footy I've seen, uh, kicking 11 goals. They just couldn't do a thing wrong. If they get some sort of start like that next week, Belmont will do a fair bit of chasing, but I think Werribee will, will be better than them. Scrubber. Uh, yeah, Belmont are good at home, but Werribee on the small ground with their solid bodies will be hard to stop. Fair enough. That takes care of the big round up this afternoon's game. Thanks again, Adam, for coming in this morning. Appreciate you coming in and your time. No worries, any time. Good luck to the East Geelong Eagles for the rest of the year. Thank you, Dick. And uh, we're just uh, going to now go to a segment now where, well, we had a very, uh, very sad happening in this town through the week where we lost one of our favourite sons. And, uh, of course, it's probably stale news now to a lot of people, but we certainly do miss him here in Geelong. He was an institution in this town. And I speak, of course, of the great Bobby Davis, who um, everybody knew that uh, it was anything to do with the Geelong Footy Club and round football. And uh, this is our tribute to Bob and uh, also our commiserations to Margaret and the rest of his family. We'll see you all again next week. Well, we've had a special luncheon today down at uh, the Oval. We've had the members of the 51 and 52 Premiership sides and uh, three fellas from Essendon who we played in 51. And actually, I've got with me Peter Piano and Peter, you met the fella that you played on, didn't he, Leslie Gardner? Yes, Les, uh, I used to change in the back line, in the forward line. Yeah. Les was there, yes. Yeah. Well, what recollections have you got of playing in the Premiership times? Oh, that's going back a long way, Wolfie. You it know is. how long it is, don't yes, you? Yes, it is a long time. Over 50 years. Yeah. But um, I, I, I think that uh, you're talking about the grand final or... Yeah, well, any... No, well, I think the whole year um, was, with, particularly with Essendon, they were the team to beat. That was yeah. obvious. But um, And I had great duels with Nipper and Neil and I. Just yes. I, we had great duels with um, Bill Hutchison yeah. and um, Tate. There was Greg Tate and... Yeah. Uh, McEwen. Yeah. And they were known as the Mosquito Fleet for Essendon. Mm. And uh, a, a lot of people today say that the combination of Neil and I was, um, you know, something to... Uh, it was. It was, of. Peter. But yeah. I think that the best combination I saw was the Essendon trip, the Mosquito yeah. Fleet. And Billy Hutchison Court was the top of the... Was the top, top of the, of the tree. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. He was a great fellow and he was a great player. So we had lots of duels with them and they were good. And... Uh, yeah. You follow the club ever since you've been here. You've never sort of lost your allegiance or anything for them, Peter. You've been coach and yeah. you still follow them exactly the same. How could you not? That's right. That's like, right. Uh, I, I can't believe that uh, the exchange of players today to other clubs. Yeah. Like, I don't think... I'm looking back now and I honestly say I wouldn't have thought that any money that I'd have ever been offered to go and leave Geelong to play somewhere else, I couldn't have done it. Well, <laughs> that's... Yeah, that's yeah. Because we were lucky, let's put it that way. We, we played lucky. in a very good team. And we were successful for yeah. so many years. Yeah. So, you know, and uh, there's something happens to you during that time that you develop this loyalty. Yeah. And I think personally that's the thing I find hard to cope with today, the lack of loyalty in <laughs> players to their... But well, it's it all boils down to yeah. how much you can get for what. That's right. Well, it's lovely to have you here, Peter. We'll go in and enjoy our luncheon. I'm sure we will. Good on you, Peter. Thank you.